If that car came and picked me up from the airport, I would be pumped. Whoever drives this car wears too much cologne. He's like divorced and he's like rolling up with this big blunt sickle. As someone who has a lot of very short friends, I'm hearing their excitement right now. <laughs> Welcome to Retro Cars Forever. My name is Brad, and this is episode four of our 10-part series. For this social experiment, I've gathered 10 single women, 10 single guys, and their 10 different cars. Our panel of single ladies are going to react and rank all the cars based on how likely they'd want to date the owners, just based on their vehicles. We've only covered three of the 10 cars in previous episodes, but right now, let's get started by briefly meeting the owner. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm an aspiring realtor and I drive a 2008 Lincoln Navigator. So why do I like my car? I like it primarily because it's big. You never really feel threatened in it because it's so large. I mean, a lot of people argue that SUVs are uh, gas guzzling and impractical uh, and they're just glorified trucks, but I disagree with that sentiment. If you're familiar with any Lincoln Navigator, you'll know about uh, it's entertainment systems that it comes with, uh, it's built-in navigation. I think any woman who admires safety and quality will like this car. Now, as a reminder, that clip you just saw of the owner was just for you viewers. The women did not get to see that. They were only shown footage of the car. So what did they think of this vehicle and where will it rank? Let's hear what they had to say. Here we play. Is that a Dodge? Is that what that symbol is? Oh, is this a Chrysler? Okay, I know what this is. This is the Lincoln Navigator. Wow, how'd you how'd you know that so quick? My parents have this car. No kidding. They like got it at an estate sale. I don't think this video is even really doing it justice. This thing is freaking huge. <laughs> I always like car in black. I think it's very elegant. It's kind of giving me hearse vibes though. <laughs> I had rented this car on location for filming. Oh, I felt like such a badass roaring up. Yeah. Ooh, with his little, his little step up thing. That's really fancy. I really enjoy that feature because like the Corvette, you need help getting into a vehicle. She's gonna be able to have artificial assistance. For it's just one of those things that add to the luxury element where it's just like, we are being so thoughtful and making you feel that important. There's a reason why this car is used for the higher end of the rideshare experiences. They're very comfortable interiors. They're very nicely appointed. The gauges look very old. Wow, that's kind of old, the navigation. I don't think I would trust old school internal GPS on a car because I've got very updated GPS on my phone. Is that a, a DVD player up there? That TV in the back seat is the lifesaver to every parent with children of a certain age. I've watched this TV. It's fine. But I do have to say this is one of the most comfortable cars I've ever ridden in in my life. It's got three rows, yeah? The fact that you can push your butt and the seats go down is really nice. As a massage therapist, she sometimes has to lug her table around. This is the kind of stuff that like gets me excited. I want to say Lincolns are the ones that Matt McConaughey is now doing ads for, <laughs> right? Everyone I know that owns a Lincoln is 50 years or older. It has a much more old fashioned feel to me. I don't know if it's something that me being mid twenties is super impressed by necessarily. I get an Escalade if you're gonna like go for style and luxury. It's a little more blingy. Enormous size is both a pro and a con. <laughs> it's nice for long trip. I always appreciate sitting a little higher and seeing everything. It's all the reasons people would buy a minivan without the hideousness of a minivan. It's a good car if you have a business service, maybe even for real estate, like a real estate agent and you need to stage homes. You could camp in that car. Like that could be a small cabin. So the fascinating thing about a car like this that has such exceptional cargo space, I have yet to meet someone who owns a car like this that would dare to get a speck of dust or dirt in or around this vehicle. I do feel safer potentially in a bigger vehicle. You definitely feel like nothing is gonna mess with you in this car. They get the car to feel safe and then they mess it up for everybody else because they can't see outside of the car. The car is so big and they aren't aware of their space. They, they end up 
merging into you and then they're the ones that honk at you for daring to be in their way. I feel like rideshare drivers are a bit better, but when it is a personal vehicle, those people kind of consistently suck. I love to be proven wrong. Hasn't happened yet. I mean, I do kind of wonder how the gas mileage on this thing. Yeah, it averages around 14 miles to the gallon. It's like you're pulling a drain out and all of your money is falling through it and into this car. And you're like, was that experience really worth it? I remember about how much it costs to fill the tank on that car. Over $100. It's not just that it seems like a bad choice financially. The environmental factor, it does kind of me a little bit. I think that's a little bit more attractive in a guy to have a guy that has a car that he genuinely enjoys and is proud of than necessarily great gas mileage. It would be less attractive to me if a guy just had a huge car for the sake of having a huge car. You need to have the lifestyle to support the Lincoln Navigator. Someone tall. <laughs> Someone who's like, I like my space. That's just my guy voice, like, I like my space. I imagine big guy, the rock. He need a big car, right? It's Cause he's muscle and big. I'm gonna guess somebody who's social. Somebody that has like an old soul. I'm kind of wanting him to be a practical goth dude. They're a little practical, but they're also a little extra. Hmm. In my experience, Lincoln Navigator drivers are douchebags. This is the car that is tailgating you. This is the car that's honking at you the second the light turns green, before the light turns green. I just, I feel it, I feel it in my bones. He is single now, but he used to be married and his blonde, wife with her Louis Vuitton was driving their four kids to and from their probably basketball games. He now likes to smoke weed. He just has these big hot box parties. It's like a mini party bus and he just like hangs out with his friends, does things he could never have done because he got married too early and he's just chilling all day every day in that big monster of a truck. Now it's time to see how this Lincoln Navigator fared in the women's rankings. After the women checked out all 10 cars, they were asked, which car owner would you be the most interested in dating, judging only by their car? Here is where they each ranked the Navigator. Number three for me was the Lincoln Navigator. I would like to think that me and my date could you know, pick up people, make it the party van, it's a nice ride. The Navigator was last because I just felt it was like a big bulky car and I feel like we couldn't park many places with it. I don't care for big cars because it makes parking a nightmare. But that's also what I very much enjoy about this car is all of that space. Number four is a Lincoln Navigator. It is obviously large enough to store everything you need. The other thing is, God forbid there is an accident, I would feel very safe. I think that a Lincoln Navigator is unnecessary and unnecessarily polluting our environment, draining our bank accounts. And I'm not about it, but I wish that I could be in it. I think it's gonna be a really nice ride. It's probably the most luxurious interior that we've seen. I would just question why a single man would need this big of a vehicle with that much like storage. It seems like something maybe a mom would drive. Well, the Navigator is so low because it reminds me of my parents. Overall, the car is good. What I like best is the automatic step, like Liz. I think the shape is kind of like boxy. Yeah, I put that Navigator last. I'm sure you might have seen my general disdain for those vehicles and the people who tend to drive them. Maybe you're super nice, but if you drive this car, maybe you're not. <laughs> and I don't want to take that risk. It seems overindulgent in a way that I'm like, uh, no. I feel like the guys who have these cars are going to watch it and be like, screw that lady, she sucks. I don't want her to like me anyway. So where did the Lincoln end up? averaging all the women's rankings, and you get an average of 7.1. For now, that puts it, unfortunately, in last place. But there are still six more cars to go that will change how this chart looks. And for our next episode, the ladies are going back in time. It's a DeLorean! Ah. As long as like someone else farts in the car and you can get that window open at least a little bit just to kind of jettison it out, then you're good. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss it. If you'd like to see more of this series, all available episodes or in a playlist link right here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and leave a comment below. I love hearing your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.